Welcome to TEC Tube. I'm Dave Herman with Tech Support. Today we're going to be going over pressure switches on AC units. A couple different ways those could be checked with the low voltage 24 volts that's generally run through them or through continuity. Easier way is probably continuity because in a lot of cases it's hard to get through the wiring, get everything loose to get access to them. So that's what we're going to look at initially today. First thing you're going to want to do locate the pressure switch in the unit you can trace back and see what color the wires are on that it's usually a pretty easy way to identify whether you have low or high pressure switches they're going to generally have different color wiring on them trace those back through into your control compartment here we have all our wires we're going to pull those out we're going to trace back i've already checked the wires that we're going to be looking for on a pressure switch that we're going to be checking our uh, blue wire with a light purple uh, line down the side of them. So we're going to pull those wires back and they're tied in at the other pressure switch because this unit is going to run two pressure switches. It's going to have a low and high side and they're tied in in series. So what we're going to do is we're going to separate that. I've already killed power to the unit so there is no power going through this unit so I'm safe on that side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the plugs on that switch, get those wires separated, and one we have running back right to the contactor. I've got the leads separated from the rest of the wiring on the unit. So now I'm going to insert the leads from my meter in to check the continuity of the switch to see if we're open or closed. So I'm going to place those in and we do have continuity on this switch. So we know that switch is closed and that switch is good. If we didn't get the continuity ring on that, we'd know that switch was open and that is our problem switch. That's the easier way to check it. It's easy to isolate, easy to separate. You could still within the circuit check that voltage wise, but it's not as easy to get in and isolate the switches. It's a lot easier to isolate them by pulling them apart and checking the continuity. If you did have them all in line, if you had multiple pressure switches, you could check the voltage, but you'd have to check at the different points and see where you're failing. And it's not always easily accessible with the power on to get to those locations. So sometimes it's a lot easier just to separate them with the power off and check the continuity of the switch to find out if it's good or bad. So just to simplify what we just discussed, here's a separate pressure switch this is the exact switch that's on this unit, but this is what it looks like. This one would be inserted on the line, and these are the leads without any plugs or connectors on them. So just as easy, essentially what we're doing and checking, we could do the same thing with our meter, and I'm just gonna clip onto this. I'm gonna use some alligator clips with my meter and check just so it's a little bit easier to see and understand. So I'm still on a continuity setting on my meter. And I'm just gonna take my two wire end leads. Like I said, we don't have any clips on this one. This is a, a raw switch. I'm gonna clip one on, clip the other on, and there's our continuity ring. So we know we're good on this switch, which we already knew that, meaning good, meaning the switch is closed. So that unit should operate fine if this switch is installed, unless it does sense some kind of pressure issue, whether a low pressure issue, if it's on the low pressure side, or if it's a high pressure switch and your pressure is too high in your unit, therefore the switch opening to shut the unit down. Hey, thanks for watching TEC Tube today. Keep an eye out for more videos and subscribe to the channel.